Finally, they got around to looking at my passport. I was, of course, grateful, most grateful that they did, because when they saw the name Thomas Dewey, they said, oh, excuse us, Mr. Dewey, please continue. And I don't know quite what that story illustrates, except that it shows that passport does have its purpose. I don't want you to think from the story that I'm an anarchist. I'm against the police on principle, or that I believe in fighting them by practical jokes, much less by lawlessness, just the contrary. Now, I know I was wrong to make all that trouble for those police in the mountains of that uh, nameless country. But, you, you see, I do a lot of traveling. I've been traveling all my life, as a matter of fact. I was born in America, but raised partly in China and sent about the world a good bit before the war and a great deal during it and even more afterwards. I have an office in one country and a studio in another. The last film, for example, was made in four countries. So I have a good deal of experience in crossing borders and coping with with the coppers all over the world. And it is true, you know, that we're invited in the travel posters to be tourists. And once we attempt it, we do discover, I'm afraid, that uh, we're guilty until proven innocent. That being so, I think a word or two about red tapeism and bureaucracy, particularly as it applies to freedom of movement, might be in order. I'm sure that's true of all of us. Think of all those forms we have to fill out, for example. You know what I mean by police forms. We get them in hotels and in frontiers in every country all over the world. We're asked, state your, your sex, male or female, for example. Well, obviously, I'm a male. I'm a man. Why should I have to answer that? State your race and religion in block letters. Well, now, why should I have to confide my religion to the police? Frankly, I don't think anybody's race is anybody's business. I'm willing to admit that a policeman has a difficult job, a very hard job. But it's the essence of our society that the policeman's job should be hard. He's there to protect, protect uh, the free citizen, not to chase criminals. That's an incidental part of his job. A free citizen is always more of a nuisance to the policeman than the criminal. He knows what to do about the criminal. I know it's very nice to look out of our window in our comfortable home and see the policemen there protecting our home. We should be grateful for the policemen, but I think we should be grateful, too, for the laws which protect us against the policemen. There are those laws, you know, and they're quite different than, than the police regulations. But the regulations do pile up. Forms keep coming in. We keep being asked to state our grandmother's father's name in block letters and to say whether we propose to overthrow the government in triplicate, why, and all that sort of thing. But you see, the bureaucrat, I'm including the bureaucrat with the police as part of one great big monstrous thing, the bureaucrat is really like a blackmailer. You can never pay him off. The more you give him, the more he'll demand. If you fill in one form, he'll give you ten. Now what are we going to do about it? Obviously, if we go on giving in to this thing, will you say, just a minute, you say, for example, why shouldn't we give in to it? Why should we make trouble for the policeman? Well, the truth is, why, why should the policeman make trouble for us? Why should he ask these, these things that are stated quite clearly in our passport? Our passport tells us everything that the policeman does need to know. Why should we make trouble? Well, we don't, because we don't want to get into trouble with the police. We're told that we should cooperate with the authorities. Now, I'm not an anarchist. I don't want to overthrow the rule of law. The contrary, I want to bring the policeman to law. Obviously, individual effort won't do any good. There's nothing an individual can do about protecting the individual in society. I'd like it very much if somebody would make a great big international organization for the protection of the individual. That way there could be officers at every frontier. And whenever we are presented with something unpleasant that we want to fill, one of these idiotic questionnaires, we could say, oh, no, I'm sorry. It's against the rules of our organization to fill out that questionnaire. 
No. They say, ah, oh, but it's the regulations. We say, very well. See our lawyer, because if there were enough of us, our dues would pay for the best lawyers in all the countries of the world. We could bring to court these invasions against our privacy and test them under law. It would be nice to have that sort of organization. It would be nice to have that sort of card. I see that card as fitting into the passport, a little larger than the passport, with a border around it in bright colors so that it would catch the eye of the police and they'd know who they're dealing with. Something like this. The card itself should look rather like a union card, I should think, a card of an automobile club. And since its purpose is to impress and control officialdom, well, obviously, it should be as official-looking as possible, with a lot of seals and things like that on it. And it might read something as follows. This is to certify that the bearer is a member of the human race. All relevant information is to be found in his passport. And except when there is good reason for suspecting him of some crime, he will refuse to submit to police interrogation on the grounds that any such interrogation is an intolerable nuisance. And life being as short as it is, a waste of time. Any infringement on his privacy, or interference with his liberty, any assault, however petty, against his dignity as a human being, will be rigorously prosecuted by the undersigned ISPIAO. And that would be the International Association for the Protection of the Individual Against Officialdom. If any such outfit is ever organized, you can put me down as a charter member.